Well, it is a landmark exhibition of New Zealand music that took nearly, well, nearly three years actually to get off the ground and contains 200 objects, over 400 images and the input of hundreds of Kiwi artists and managers. Volume Making Music in Aotearoa has residents at Auckland Museum until May 2017. They're here to tell us all about it. Uh, the New Zealand Hall of Fame's Mark Roach and Esther Tobin from Auckland Museum. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, and can I just say congratulations, guys, because yeah. everybody is talking yeah. about this exhibition. Yeah. Thank you. Let's start with you, Mark. Now, this was your baby. You had the idea for this. I mean, yeah. when did it germinate and how did it how did it come to be? Do you know, it's like it's like one of those those crazy things where it's just a simple idea. We were talking about the New Zealand Music Hall of Fame and we were like, where is this hall that we're talking about? Is it a corridor? Is it a school hall? What is this thing? We, we just realised we didn't have a physical space to honour our inductees or, in fact, any of New Zealand music's history. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the seed. And uh, Cole called the museum and said, look, it's a really great idea. Well, it's a bit more complicated than that, but <laughs> yeah. it's a really great idea. Yeah, you should do it. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and as it turned out, you know, the stars aligned. They, they were thinking about doing something along the music lines and... Yeah, because this hasn't been be. done before, has it? Nothing no. like this. No. no. And Esther, you know, obviously you had to start making the first phone calls. <laughs> How did that go? Where did you start? We, we, well, we started with we had a kind of a big long list of stories and people we wanted to include in the show. And we, we literally phoned them up and said, can we come and talk to you and learn about your contribution and your music and, and what you have in your closet? and what we, might be appropriate to you. So it just starts with a conversation and then over many months we kind of progress it from there. Now I know a lot of Kiwis have gone to see it um, and there's going to be plenty of time for us to all go and see it when they're visiting Auckland in particular. Uh, can you explain for those that you know want to come and see what they're going to experience? Yeah, so there's, there's two key things about this show. One is it's the history of New Zealand music. We begin in the now, so it begins in the 2000s. You first arrive and you see contemporary young artists and we work our way back through the decades to the 1950s. So that's kind of a chronology and a history. But then there's this really interactive and immersive quality to the show. So in every decade, there's something you can get your hands on and do. Yeah, which is so, that's what's so unique about this too, isn't it? Um, Mark, how did you feel that first moment where you walked in and you saw what it had become, what your idea had become? It, w it was pretty mind-blowing. You know, it, it, I, I've seen it sort of take form and, and come into life and things like that. And you're looking at a lot of drawings for a long time. Everything's in 2D and then you see it in 3D and you see it all around you and you see all this history around you. And uh, I remember walking through for the first time and just it hit me like a wave. There's just the emotion of it all. It was just incredible. Was felt proud. Yeah, Tears. Very, yeah, Tears. very proud. <laughs> and what, what sort of, you know, what sort of things have we got? Because I heard Lord gave us her Grammy to put in there, or gave us, or gave you guys. Oh, hello, yeah. <laughs> okay, Lent. Yes. Yeah, 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 Lent. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so what sort of other things have we got? We've got we've got everything from music ephemera, which is really exciting to see, kind of paperwork related to New Zealand music. We've got amazing outfits. We've got, of course instruments got the whole gamut yeah. so you're there Esther so you're uh, making the calls and you're also going out to see people and you're talking to artists and you're literally rummaging around in their in their cupboards That's and seeing right. what they've got what is it like I think it's really odd for them because they've never thought of um, objects in this way in terms of a museum sort of way so um, there's been lots of stories about New Zealand music but never through kind of actual things so um, suddenly the white gloves come out and it's all very odd for them so they're sort of handing you this dirty old thing exactly. and then you're getting the white gloves on and putting exactly. it into a special case and taking it. Exactly, like we've got um, Andrew Fagan's pink fluffy suit, which is my favourite, and it's literally like a big pink furry yeti, and he wore it day after day on tour, and he said it reeked. Because <laughs> <laughs> they dry it on the heater, he didn't wash it, he just dry it overnight. So, um, yeah, going and finding those things is a real, real treat. Uh, and Mark, you know, with the New Zealand Music Hall of Fame, you're right at the start, because you said there is no base, really. Mm. Do you think this is the start of perhaps looking at a base? That, that's, the, uh, that's the idea right. long term, is that we, uh, we hope that... Uh, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of people go through the doors, obviously they will, and uh, gives us the, the platform to do this on a permanent basis, um, and then we can tell even more stories about New Zealand music. Well, this fantastic uh, exhibition which is on at Auckland Museum right through until, it's May 2017, isn't it? Yeah. I think every Kiwi is going to have to get along and try and see this, because it is a history of all of our music, well not all of our music, because you can't do that, but music from the 50s right through to now. Uh, how do you decide, or how did you even try to decide what went in 
and what stayed out because you must have had a lot of things coming in. Once word got out, people would have been coming yeah. to you as well. Yeah, a few sleepless nights. Yeah, I mean, how do you do that? What did you do? I, I think the, the main thing we did is we got someone on board who's an expert in New Zealand music. So Graham Reed came on board as a content advisor and he wrote us this research document, which is the history of New Zealand music. How long is that? It's how many? 30,000 words. It's oh, it's a small one, yeah. Just so that kind of gave us our backbone to the stories and what we, what we needed to have in there and who we needed to have in there. So that was our starting point. And from your very first vision, Mark, as to what this is, mm. to it actually being exhibited now, yeah. had it changed much? Not so much changed much, but I think I didn't have a firm idea of what it was going to be, and I think it's just exceeded my expectations, and I think it's exceeded the entire music industry's expectations. People are at the opening, and they're just there's tears streaming down their face with just how beautifully this has been treated, and all those nostalgic memories in there. Mm. Well, I think people. Th I think when they first initially heard about a music exhibition, I know that there was some people, I think you were telling me yesterday, that people thought, oh, it's going to be too niche, only for musicians. But the fact is, every single Kiwi is affected by Kiwi music. That's so right. we're all going to be interested in seeing it. What were some of the really special things that you discovered, mm. like really stood out to you, like the unusual things, not the guitars and things, but the really different things? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. One of my favourites is um, we have, uh, so Dave Dobbin's wife had kept the flyer from the AATS Square concert that Didi smashed it in 1984. And Dave had used that flyer to write his set list out for Didi Smash. So it's Outlook, for, that. Outlook for Thursdays <laughs> on there, you know, wailing all these wow. great songs on there. He never got through that set list, of course, because I think one song into the set, then the riots few, broke out. Riots and a few cars um, And that's in there on this really great display where you can actually turn it round and see the front of, it, front of it, a great piece of artwork, turn it round and see the set list. It's that's wonderful. great. Yeah, I think that's... It gives you chills when you see something. Yeah, like I bet. That. Yeah, that's incredible. And what about for you? I was just thinking, you know, objects for us are kind of portals to tell stories. So um, we've got Midge Marsden's guitar in there in the 50s and 60s, and it's got a beautiful case as well that's open, and you can look in and see on the case is scribbled to Midge Love Dinah Lee. So there was a lovely story where he turned up at a rehearsal of hers, and she said, come and play with me. And he was like, no, 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 I'm on my lunch break. Don't take a photo of me, because a journalist. And a journalist took a photo of him, and he got fired the next day, because <laughs> it was in the paper. So she sent him this guitar as a, as a, as a sorry kind of gift. Wow. That is, that is so many good stories. Yeah. Yeah. I think I like the sound of the interactive bits too, where you can make yourself be on the cover of Rip It Up. That's right. Uh, and there's oh, yes. other sort of interactive things as well. You can play in a band. Yeah, that, that's, that's one of my favourite areas actually. So, and, and that was really early on, we wanted that in there. We wanted to make sure that people had the experience of playing music as well as just looking at it and listening to it. Um, so you get on, this, on a stage in a 70s pub and you can have a go at the drums, the keyboards, the bass guitar, Synth. the guitar, um, the lead guitar, and you've got a crowd in front of you cheering you on while you do it. But this is the best bit, is that you can actually save all of this and be sent it all, emailed it all at the yeah. end. Yeah, so um, the project's been amplified by Spark, which means they've come on board and supported a digital layer to the whole show. So when you arrive, you get a lanyard, and you can walk through and collect photos of yourself doing all these things, but also playlists of um, the artists have curated and um, films as well. So you can go home and kind of absorb all the content that's in the show. And you know what else I love about this exhibition is that a lot of people sometimes look at a museum and go, not my cup of tea, but this is going to get, because music touches everybody, it's going to yeah. get so many people through yeah. those doors to experience our rich tapestry of music in there this country. There is something oh, in rich there for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice work. Oh, and there we go. Uh, and that, that, leads, leads on that. <laughs> to everybody's lives. Oh, thank you so much for that. I'll be thank sure you. to get along to check out this incredible exhibition, Volume Making Music in Aotearoa. It is on at Auckland Museum until May 2017. Mark Anissa, thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you guys. Congratulations.